lads, welcome back to another video. This one is going to be talking about City vs Liverpool, Jermaine Defoe, Ray McKinnon and then of course the Dunfermline news as usual. Mainly talking about the Alloa game coming up tomorrow. So let's get into it. So to start us off we had three good guys on the pitch last night. Of course I've got good guys FC and within that there's Roberto Firmino, James Milner and David Silva. And they all started the City vs Liverpool game last night in what was basically branded as probably the game of the season even before the game even started. The game didn't exactly disappoint, it was a fantastic game, end to end, both teams chipping away at each other and probably two of the best teams in Europe at the moment and one had to come out on top and it was Manchester City. And if one team was going to end Liverpool's unbeaten run in the Premier League, so far anyway, then you would think it would be Man City, especially playing at the Etihad. Some of you may be sitting and thinking just now, but they only just lost 3-2 to Crystal Palace at the Etihad. But you're not telling me that the Manchester City squad go into the game with the same mentality as they do against Crystal Palace at home. But you're not telling me that the Manchester City squad go into the game with the same mentality as they do when they play Crystal Palace at home to when they play Liverpool at home. They're completely different games. And maybe there lies the problem and the reason as to why they lost against Crystal Palace that they just didn't consider it as high a calibre a game as against Liverpool. And I mean, a lot of folk would agree with that kind of feeling that it's not as high a calibre of game. But if Man City had played as they did last night against Crystal Palace overall, then they would have probably ran out rampant winners as they usually do most weeks. Although, I will openly criticise one Liverpool player for the performance last night. Dejan Lovren. Liability. He's just, just defensively more astute than Phil Jones. And believe me, that's no compliment. As it stands though, Liverpool are still four points ahead of Manchester City and there's no games in hand for either side, so... Will this game actually have a big impact at the end of the season? We'll wait and see. Now, now, now. On to the eventful stuff. What a 48 hours it's been in Scottish football. This is where the real football drama is. I mean, we've had the small case of Alfredo Morelos not getting pulled up for any of his kickouts or stamps on anyone during the Rangers Celtic game at the weekend, which caused uproar with many Celtic fans and just general fans because it just seems a bit of a daft call by referee John Beaton to have seen all the incidents but not really thought that any of them were worth any sort of cards. Another baffling decision by our referees. But the main talking point, fresh off his inclusion in Good Guys FC in Wednesday's episode of Punt It Long, Jermaine Defoe is set to join in on the Scottish football bandwagon. What a day. What a day it is, lads. I honestly couldn't give a toss whether he's signing for Rangers, Celtic or bloody Albion Rovers. What a signing that is for Scottish football. What a player. And honestly, Patrice Evra said it perfectly. I love this game. On the signing itself, by the way, that's a real sign of intent by Rangers. Albeit they're not paying his wages, they're getting him on a loan deal, and then they're also looking to bring in Stephen Davis, who's obviously a free. But it does show a sign of ambition and intent for Rangers, and Celtic really now need to put their hands in their pockets and show the same sort of ambition because they could end up being a bit falling behind, especially on the transfer front. They'll certainly need to do a lot more business than they are currently and they have done in the last window as well to match the same sort of ambition and quality the Rangers have just shown in two signings there. Age is just a number. Jermaine Defoe and Stephen Davis will be fantastic additions to this league. Now, from Good Guys FC member Jermaine Defoe to Fraud FC member Ray McKinnon. The man looked hell of a stressed in his interview post-match at the weekend there and he did cut a very frustrated figure. But why? I hear you ask. Well, his squad was a load of and he couldn't be with them anymore. That's why. And he's wasted absolutely no time in getting rid of players that he simply doesn't rate. Even players that he signed himself during his short Falkirk tenure so far. On the out list at time of filming this video, which is 9.34 on Friday morning, Marcus Haber, Denon Lewis, Ruben Samet and Mark Russell, along with Mustafa Dumbaya and Prince Boabin, and the latter two were Ray McKinnon's signings. I mean, he really doesn't rate this lot. The guy's basically exposing himself and his own poor recruitment. And then on the incomings, again, at time of filming this video, we've got Abdul Osman, Ian McShane, Mark Warrington and 
Ross McLean who followed him from Morton technically because he was on loan at Morton, got recalled back to Motherwell and then he signed him as a Falkirk player on an 18 month deal just yesterday. So is he just as much a snake as McKinnon is? Maybe not as big a deal, but it's certainly the same pathway that he's followed. I'll give McKinnon credit though, if you don't want shite then don't keep shite and that's exactly the kind of motto that Ray McKinnon seems to be going into this January window with. The faces that he was pulling in that post-match interview after our game at the weekend really showed how stressed he was with this squad and what he's had to put up with in the last few months and the fact that he really isn't impressed with the majority of players that he has at his disposal and I would imagine that there's going to be another at least five or six additions into that Falkirk squad come the end of January and if I'm being honest I'm not going to say I'm surprised because Falkirk have been utterly so poor this season and they really need a kick up the arse. It's a bit like that St Mirren squad a few seasons ago. Can he turn it around the same way Jack Ross did? Again, like the Liverpool Man City stuff, we'll wait and see. And now we move across to the important stuff for me. Dunfermline versus Alloa this weekend. There'll be no underestimating the loss this weekend from me. None at all. They've got fantastic players and they've got a very well gelled system under Jim Goodwin. And I don't think I've ever denied that. I just think that I've been a bit naive to the fact of how good they actually can be as a unit. I've always said it and then went back on my words a bit and just said that we should 100% be beating them. And I'm not going to go down that route this weekend. The only two teams to have not been beaten by Alloa so far this season, the only teams to have a 100% record against them, are both Ross County and Air United. And that is the current top two in the league. So there's literally no reason why we should be expecting a win against Alloa, especially considering the season we've had so far, and how close Alloa actually are to us in the league at the current moment. So this weekend, whilst I still think we do need to win, it's certainly not a given. As I said, the only team to have a 100% record is the current top two. We currently sit sec and we currently sit seventh, so there is literally no reason why we should be expecting this one. They'll make us work for it if we do get the win, but Fingers crossed that it'll all turn out alright in the end. I mean, I'm getting hospitality at East End Park for the first time ever, so they better do the bloody business. I'll go positive. 3-1 pars. And again, might be being a bit naive, but I've got to go for a win for my own team. I'm certainly not going to predict an Alloa win because I do want us to win and I'm not going to be negative at all because that performance last weekend, if we can replicate that, albeit I know Alloa will set up differently to what Falkirk did, then if we can play like that, then we're bound to come away with some sort of result. And this might come back to bite me again, but I've got confidence in my team for once. So, 3-1 pars, let's get it. And that's it for this video, guys. Cheers for watching. If you did enjoy, please give it a like. Comment down below anything you think. What's your score prediction for the Dunfermline game coming up? What do you think about Jermaine Defoe possibly signing for Rangers, if it's not happened by the time that I post this video? And also... What did you think about the Liverpool Man City game last night? Do you think Man City will pull it back now? Or do you think Liverpool will actually still win the league? And until our next video, which will of course be the match day vlog, the big match for tomorrow's game against Alloa, I'll see you then. Cheers guys.